Good morning, everybody. Welcome. My name is Richard Simons, and this video is going to be about the Honda E. What a fantastic little quirky retro car this is. I've not even been in one or driven one before, so my first time in a Honda E. And big thank you to Horizon Honda in Christchurch for the loan of this car for 24 hours. So I'm not just going to run this around town for half an hour, an hour. It's primarily a city car, but I'm going to take this on a day out with me and see what this car is like covering probably about 300 miles a day as we take it as part of our daily course of work, delivering a Tesla over there, then we'll be collecting another one. So I'm going to be going up to near Cambridge with this car, covering about 300 miles, and this is due to be the hottest day of the year so far with predicted temperatures up to 40 degrees Celsius. So will the Honda E keep its cool? You're not going to miss this one in the car park, are you? <laughs> look at it. Uh, but brilliant little retro looks, LED headlights round. This is the charge port up here, so how's that going to work in practice? Couple of cameras down here. What's this for, Gintz? I don't know. Don't know, we'll find out. <laughs> We've got digital wing mirrors. What are they gonna be like to use? I've had these in an Audi e-tron, the fat e-tron, and uh, you get used to them, but they do take a bit of getting used to. Uh, we've got keyless entry. Looks like you can probably use your phone to access there as well. This is a five-door car, look, a little hidden key, little handle there, look. I think it's a really cool little thing, and this will be my first time getting inside it and driving it, so let's see how we get on. It's just bit me. There we go. <laughs> okay, right. Well, let's uh, get straight on with things because uh, we've got a busy day here. Uh, right, this is my first time in it. So I'm going to test putting in my nav destination and see what that's like. Um, firstly, let's get some climate control going on. It's already a warm day. Crikey, 25 degrees Celsius. I've got 87% of the battery. That's given an indicated range of 111 miles. Okay, right. Well, let's see if we can reset a trip so we can get efficiency test. Trip computer. Uh -huh. Trip A reset. Manually reset. Okay, so I think that's done. Okay, so let's find navigation. We've got one, two, three, four, five screens in here. It's a completely different layout to anything else. Obviously, these digital wing mirrors, which, like I say, I, I did get used to them before on the Audi, but they do usually take a bit of getting used to. Okay, so I'm going to put in my destination now. So the first stop here is going to be High Wycombe. And we're simply delivering that Tesla. Like I say, we, we're doing this in the course of our daily work anyway, so we can get a real life test of these cars. So there's our navigation in 67 miles, so we should have enough range to go straight there. That's good. Got it. Right, trips are reset. I think we are go. Uh, seat mirrors. Yeah, mirrors are okay, actually. Uh, seat can come forward a little bit. Okay, I mean, it's nice in here. It's a dinky little car, but it feels pretty open and spacious. That's pretty good. Got some buttons here to select drive. I've got drive mode, sport, normal. Okay, let's just go normal. Okay, we're going to go. Okay, again, so I think I'm good. Ooh. Whoa, <laughs> the turning circle's amazing. So it wasn't long ago, it was only a couple of weeks ago I was driving the... Uh, roundabout, oh. take the first exit. A couple of weeks ago I was driving Please the drive Mini Electric. And I really like the Mini Electric, what a great little car. Again, a bit, I think a bit like this, you know, they're not... 16 miles on the they're not going for massive, heavy batteries that are expensive. They're just going for a range which really does what you need for the normal daily commute and city driving. But, you know, sometimes you want to take these cars out of town and do a longer journey, so let's test what a car like this is like by doing that with us today. Oh, here we go, digital wing mirrors. Yeah, okay, I'm going to check anyway, as yes, you should. Yeah. So on the mirror, it gives you a little kind of orange lines to sort of indicate where you're going to be. I think the Audi e-tron did that as well. There we go. Is this a digital rear view mirror as well? I don't know, it looks like a normal mirror. Quite good visibility in the mirror. It's actually a large mirror and I can, it really does cover the whole of the rear window. So I can see out the back really well, actually. That's nice. And from here, the digital mirrors look okay. But the main thing about digital mirrors is it's often a bit difficult to just gauge the perception of distance because you can't even sort of go like that. So it's 2D, not 3D. So it's harder to gauge that. Uh, so we're in traffic. I will get this up to 70 when I can. But um, yeah, I like it. This is cool. It should be good fun to see what it's like. They come pretty well specified, the Honda E. Um, I'll grab all the details later. We've literally just got the car and jumped in it, so, <laughs> so I'm a bit naive what we got. But I think it's basically the Honda E Advance. Uh, and so you get 
spec as standard. They're not cheap cars, these. I think they're about £36,000 uh, new, but you do get a good specification to them. Um, we've obviously certainly got climate control, air conditioning, which seems to be doing the job just nicely right now. It's already 26 degrees Celsius and it's not even nine o'clock in the morning yet. This is an unheard of heat wave for us in England and indeed the rest of Europe is also uh, really getting this heat wave at the moment. So this is due to be the hottest day of the year and probably one of the hottest days on record uh, in the UK. The hottest day on record I think is just over 38 degrees Celsius and it's predicted some places could get to 40 degrees Celsius today. So I know there'll be people in some places that are laughing at those temperatures, but um, yeah, for us, this is uh, pretty extreme. Hence the shorts and flip-flops. But between here and High Wycombe, it's gonna be a mixture of dual carriageway, motorway, some A roads, and then a little bit of city driving at the end. So we'll get a real mixed bag for efficiency. You gotta remember that kind of higher speeds are the least efficient place for an electric car. So. Actually, this will probably be more of a worst case scenario for efficiency. You've got more wind resistance. When you're driving around town and just on kind of 30, 40, 50 miles an hour A roads, you tend to get pretty good efficiency from electric cars. So, uh, but this will be a good test in the real world. So let's see what we get. The traffic lights are red. Next to me is Gintz in the Model 3. On green, yeah? Not yellow, on green. And it is dual carriageway. Oh no! <laughs> it got lift off the brake and it creeped, it didn't hold. I'll have to ask my accountant about that. Uh, Model 3 quicker. And do you know what? We reckon 0 to 30. <laughs> this is pretty similar to the uh, Model 3. Uh, it's a standard range, that one. Um, I don't know. The Model 3 is quicker, but yeah. It's quite nippy, this thing. It's not bad. It's not bad. Okay, so I've covered a real mixture of roads now motorway, country lanes, stuck in some traffic. And uh, I'll give you some of my initial impressions. I think I'll do, like this video, I think I want to focus on kind of range, doing a longer journey in the Honda E, uh, what efficiency we get from it and that sort of thing. And I think we'll then do a bit of a roundup and overall review as a separate second video. So it's easy for people to distinguish between the two. Um, but I'll give you some of my first impressions now after spending a bit over an hour in this car. One is the air conditioning works lovely, that's great. It is a great spec, I mean it feels nice, it feels really good quality and I keep noticing nice little things. So it's got heating elements in the windscreen here, it's got proper heated windscreen, it's got heated steering wheel, it's got heated seats. Um, obviously I don't want any of that on today. Uh, the mirror cameras are, are pretty good actually, they're better than the Audi e-tron uh, that I had them on before. They actually work really nicely. The whole screen, I mean it's this weird long wide screen but you can customise this. I think if you spend a bit of time, you know, you can customise this, having different things in different windows, it's pretty good. And see here, look, I was about to join the motorway, it's 0 to 30 is pretty good and it drops off a little bit but it picks up pretty well. The handling is uh, okay. It just gets up a limit pretty quickly. Um, he was pushing me out then a little bit. <laughs> you get to the limit though, so it's, it's, it's nice and direct up to a point, and then when you kind of get near a limit, it kind of falls away. Um, but you're never gonna push that hard in a car like this, I don't think. Um, the Mini Electric kind of has got that sharp edge to the handling that would carry on kind of handling hard and having a bit of fun, but what this does have because of that is, is softer suspension and the ride on this I think is just remarkably good. It isn't, because it's a small car, I keep forgetting how small this thing is from inside it. Um, small cars tend to be a little bit choppy and a bit bumpy, you kind of understand that, but this is really refined and very smooth. And it's very comfortable to be in, like I, it, like I say, I keep forgetting just the, how small this car is. So. It's more comfortable than the Mini, I would say. It's well refined and well sound insulated as well. So I think on the motorway, it's actually a little bit quieter than the Mini as well. You don't really hear any wind noise. You get a little bit of road roar, the same as the Mini, but I think it's a bit quieter than that. So it's a nice package with great spec, very refined, very smooth riding, and I really like it. I really do. It's a great quirky little thing and it is a bit different. Which car do me prefer, this or the Mini Electric? Well, I was speaking to Gintz about that just now and uh, I'll give you some opinion on that maybe a bit later on when we spend a bit more time in this. I do feel like the Mini would be a little bit more efficient actually. So I'm averaging four miles per kilowatt hour. I'm not 
you know, it's ideal to run them side by side, but I think the Mini would be a bit more efficient. We're not trying for efficiency, like this is just driving. I want this to be kind of a real world life of a car, you've got places to get. So we're driving as quick as we can drive, basically, and within the limits. So four miles per kilowatt hours, okay. But when we get to the stop one, let's see what the Tesla's averaged. Okay, so I've just stopped for a, a charge there and I've only got 11% left. We're just at the first stop off point anyway. So let me just catch Gintz. He's just pulled out to me. Yeah, Gintz, Gintz, Gintz. You all right? How'd you turn off the parking sensors? <laughs> <laughs> it's just beeping. Oh. Let's go to park. There, should, there we go. Okay, again, so there's somebody with a chainsaw or leaf blower there, but I hope you can hear. So I've got 11% battery and I average actually only 3.9 miles per kilowatt. I know we weren't trying for efficiency, but what did you average? 217 watt hours per mile. 217. That's nearly five miles per kilowatt hour. Hang on, so the Tesla Model 3 standard range is more efficient than this. I do feel like the Mini might be slightly more efficient, but we certainly weren't trying. It does feel like on the motorway, Maybe this isn't the sleekest car for aerodynamics, so it does feel like it suffers a little bit there. Um, but my 3.9 is four miles per kilowatt hour most of the way. The Tesla Model 3 standard range average 4.6 miles per kilowatt hour. As always. So somehow again, Tesla, I mean, that's, that's a bigger car, it's heavier, but it's more aerodynamic. I think this is just a bit of a, a brick, but it, I tell you, it's smooth, isn't it? It's On nice. the motorway, it's comfortable, we're refined. That's good, eh? Yeah, I like it. Right, let's get some charge. So I'd like to say it's always rosy with charging speeds and locations, but that first uh, BP Pulse wasn't actually working. So I come to another one around the corner here, uh, actually at a Harvester restaurant in High Wycombe. And this one's fine, no problem at all. It's exceptionally hot today, so apparently everyone's overheating, it's right in the sun. Honda claimed 80% in 30 minutes. Well, I've gone from 6% to 82%, but it's taken 48 minutes so far. So it's not it was charging quick initially but then it's certainly slowed down and i think it's just down to the the heat here today uh this is the car charging away here sort of the units in the shade but it is nearly 40 degrees celsius here now it's very hot so uh i need to get up to kind of at least 90 percent to continue on we are eating lunch at the moment so um we'll finish eating our food and then we'll head on back and get plugged in uh, sorry unplug and go <laughs> Just spilled water all down me. <laughs> uh, right, we're just at the furthest we're going to be now. So we're sort of east of Stevenage and I'm just trying to see how far it is to get home. But uh, 140 odd miles, 140, 145 miles. So there's 36% of the battery now. So yeah, another charge on the way back. So uh, right, I'm going to go and buy this Model 3 that's over here. And uh, again, it's going to take us and get a charge, eh? And then yep. we'll meet up in a bit and then carry on the journey. Cool, right, let's do it. 39 degrees Celsius. Feel it outside. It's horrible. It is hot. We just set a new record, apparently, uh, of over 39 degrees Celsius officially. Uh, so well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's unheard of in the UK. New record. And that's all down to climate change. And that's because people are still walking into car dealers today and buying combustion cars new, which it just shouldn't be doing anymore. It's just silly, isn't it? And this is the result. So don't mind it too hot. Okay, so we're southbound again now and just got down to South Mim services. So there's some Tesla charges over there. There's a couple of grid serving and there's a whole load of new Apple, Apple gate. I think it's like welcome brake services zone. At five miles of range left, but it's printing quite quickly at the moment, straight back up to 7% within about a minute. Uh, but what I think we found earlier was the charger's overheating, so hopefully we don't get an issue like that this here now, because uh, we're now quarter to three in the afternoon, we're meant to be back at five. It's going to be a bit tired again. Yep. <laughs> so we'll see how long we're here for charging. Okay, this is me now leaving South Moon Services. Uh, we did half an hour on the charger there, and that took it back up to 75%, uh, and then the charge rate was just slowing. I think even if I stayed longer, like 100%, I'd, we, it's 115 miles back. I'm not sure we'd do it in one go anyway. So uh, I'm just going to drive for uh, a little bit and then do another quick, sort of quick top up. Uh, there was an engineer on site there um, at uh, South Moon. So he was saying that the, the charges are slowing because of the, the sheer heat today. So they've not seen it before, but just because of the exceptional temperatures, it has uh, slowed some of the charges down. So. There's other people waiting to charge there. I've got enough to carry on for now, so I'll do exactly that. Okay, 
so that was another 30 minute top up at uh, near Farnborough. Uh, wrong button, there you go, drive. Okay, so that was another 30 minute top up just to make sure we have plenty to get back with and enough for tomorrow morning as well actually. Um, so it's charging speed there, that was the first time we could see the charging speed because I couldn't see it on the car anywhere. When you're charging it doesn't seem to display unless I'm missing something what charging speed you're getting but on the Instabot one I could see what I was getting. Uh, so initially I was pulling 48 kilowatts, so over 29%, uh, nice and warm of course today. <laughs> Uh, so that was good, but then uh, when I came back to the car and checked it again, uh, I'd gone down to about 20 kilowatt charging speed by 70%. So it does obviously slow down as it gets more full, like most cars, and that last bit just takes a bit longer. So, yeah, lots of long journeys. This isn't the ideal car, uh, which is a shame because it is fine, comfortable for a long journey. That's not a problem at all. Uh, but it, um, efficiency I'm just struggling a little bit I've got 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour as the average and I think we would see more than that with uh, something like the Mini and something like the Hyundai Ionic would just charge faster so and also be more efficient for the same kind of usable battery capacity and uh, we've even seen that the Tesla Model 3 is actually getting better uh, efficiency so real world range of this car on the motorway is really no more than 100 miles. You could probably drive efficiently and travel on A roads and commute and get over 100 miles, but you've got to allow yourself really about one mile per percent of the battery. Um, so it's not as easy to work out you know, what you've got for real world range there. So, um, but other than that, it's been a very nice car to spend a bit of time in today. Okay, everybody, back at home now. So that was 298.7 miles covered. So 300 miles basically in a Honda E, predominantly a city car, commuter car. Uh, I averaged 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour, which I was a tad disappointed in, but then the air condition has been going like the absolute clappers all day and we have been running at motorway speeds. We haven't basically, we've not been trying for efficiency at all. So, um, you know, it's probably about worst case scenario on that. So it's real world range, I was going to say about 100 miles basically, you'd have to be trying to get more than that if you really push on you could easily be ended up doing less than that. And it's charging speed wasn't brilliant, um, it's quite quick initially so to add like from 5% to 50% is pretty quick, uh, but then it, it does tail down a little bit there. So you know if you're doing lots of long journeys it's probably not the ideal car of course it's not really intended like that the car can do it great like it's a superb comfortable car even on the motorway at speed it's it's so refined the ride's brilliant uh, these wing mirror cameras have been absolutely great by the way and the cruise control lane assist lane keeping radar cruise that's all been great air conditioning good and all the infotainment system actually has been pretty good once you get used to it and find your way around these screens it's been uh, all good so as a car and if you buy it with the right intention I think the Honda E is a brilliant little package and it certainly gets my thumbs up. I really like it, but just don't buy it if you're going to be doing lots of long journeys. But I don't think you'd be buying such a small car anyway. To be in it doesn't feel as small as it is. So it's a wonderful little package, lovely and quirky, some lovely design touches, really well built and a pleasure to drive. So the Honda E gets my thumbs up, even with a 300 mile day. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. I hope it's been useful. I did film another little kind of quick review video whilst I was a charger, so we'll probably put that out there as a separate thing as well, just going through some of the bits I like and don't like and some of the other details about the car. So see you on the next one. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our videos. If you like our content and want to see more, don't forget to not only subscribe, but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded. Plus, we're also on Instagram. Just look up R Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So lots of news stories and things as we go on each one of those channels.